All right, now that I'm able to connect successfully to my database, I want to be able to add some new information to the database using a web form. That means I'm going to have to create a basic form with, uh, with form fields that match up with the data fields in my table that I automatically, that I want to uh, create. And I'll be using a SQL statement query to insert this data into that table. So I'll start this part off by creating a more traditional web page. There we go, so now I've got a basic web page. All right, in this basic web page, I'm going to go ahead and create a form. I'll just go ahead and make something to look at, though. Um, I'll put in a headline. And I'll start to create a form. Method equals post. And the action for my form is actually going to lead to itself. So insert data.php. So this form is going to lead to itself. And I'm going to do some PHP in a second just at the just above the opening HTML tag. Okay. That'll be my form. Now within my form, uh, I am going to put in a hidden input. And this will basically get checked later on. Uh, so if somebody just goes to this page, yet they have yet to submit the form, a blank field isn't going to get sent over to the database. So we'll have that in there. And I'll go ahead and create a uh, field set with a legend. And then I'm going to create just a couple of text box fields here. that one. I'll have a first name box and a last name box. There we go. So this is my form, method, post, action. It's going to lead to itself. I'll have some PHP in just a second here. Hidden input, basically to keep track if the form has already been submitted or not. I've got a uh, field set with a legend. has two text fields, uh, both with labels. Uh, one's going to ask for the first name. The other one's going to ask for the last name. And then I've got a submit button so that the action will take place. So that takes care of that part. Now I'm going to jump up here above my opening HTML tag. I'm going to insert some PHP. go. And I'll do a couple things in here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to check to see if the form is submitted. Once again, referring to that hidden input. So I'm going to do an if statement. Use an is set. Okay, so I'm basically checking to see if the submitted value, I'm sorry, if the uh, submitted field was posted. Okay, and that would only happen if somebody actually hit the submit button. And let me go ahead, and this is a if statement, so let me go ahead and close it off down here. And I'll do a little comment. Okay. Now, a couple things you got to take care of. If somebody has actually hit the submit button on this form, which is what the if statement is checking, then let's go through a series of actions. I'm going to include my connect MySQL PHP data. Okay. So recall, and in fact, I have to kind of point out a little 
thing that I've already taken care of. On my connect MySQL PHP, this is the one I created in the previous video, we set some constants and we made a connection with this DB connection variable, dbcon variable, and this actually makes the connection to the database. Now what I deleted from that last video is I took out the if statement that gave me a successful message uh, if I was able to connect. So I just got rid of that. So now my connect MySQL PHP script is simply controlling the connection to the database. So I'm going to include that data. And this is how you can have multiple scripts use your same basic connection. So I'm going to include connect MySQL PHP. And then I'm going to create a couple variables here. I'm going to create variables for the data that's submitted with the form. So I'm going to have an F name variable, which is going to be equal to the post from the form, and that's particularly the field, using the name equals f name. And I'll have a similar one for last name. Now I'm also going to make a variable for my SQL statement that I'm actually going to use to insert my data, my form data, into the database. So I'll make a variable called SQL insert. And I'm going to use some SQL statements here. So I'm going to go ahead and quotation. I'm going to insert into my people table. If you recall, back on my database, in fact, let me jump over there real quick. Back on the database that I created earlier, um, there's my database with one table. My table is called people. Okay, And I created several fields in there. I've got my auto increment people ID, first name, and last name field. Let's make a mental note of this. The field names that I use in the, in the database are first name and last name, all spelled out lowercase. Okay, so back over to my editor. I'm going to insert into the people. Okay, now what fields am I inserting into? The first name field and the last name field. The values that I'm inserting are going to be the values, basically, from my form, which I have already set into variables. So I can do F name and L name. Alrighty. So I'm setting variables for the values in my form field, and I've set a variable for my SQL statement. Now I'm going to do another if statement. So this is an if statement within my parent if statement. Oh, and I see by my color coding, I forgot my closing quotes up there, so let's not forget that. I did a double quote to enclose my entire insert or SQL statement here. So take care of that. All right, and now let's do another if statement. So I'm going to do an if. And this is the end of my nested if statement. And what I want to check for here is I'm actually going to run the query, okay? And I'm going to check for if the query can't be run, in that case, I want to display an error message. Okay, so I'm going to do a not MySQLI query. And then this also this is a function, so that gets its own set of parentheses. And within the MySQLI query function, I need to use my dbcon variable. And if you recall, this is for my connect. There's my dbcon variable for my connection. That's the database I'm connecting to. And then, of course, the SQL statement that I'm using. So my dbcon variable and my SQL insert variable. Now, if this can't be done, remember, exclamation mark is not. If that can't be done, then I'm going to go ahead and end this right now and just say, you know, error inserting new record. Okay, And that's the end of my nested if statement. Now, if I, can, if I can successfully insert a new record, I would like a little confirmation. So I think what I'll do here is I'm going to create another little variable called a new record. Let me see if I can't spell here. New record, and that's going to be uh, one record added to the database. There we go. So that little variable is going to contain this particular string of data. And where will I display that? I'm going to jump down here below my form. I'll go ahead and do another little baby you know, PHP section here. 
and I'll simply do an echo statement of my new record variable. There we go. So this is my form. Now of course this variable is not going to contain anything until somebody successfully submits, you know, submits some data. All right, so based on this, I'm going to go ahead and try a test. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and check it out on my browser. Okay, here we go. Let me go to my insert data PHP script. There's my form. Let me go and enter some information. Put in my name and click add new person. There we go. One record added to the database. Now I can confirm this. Let me just jump over to my database and uh, oh, let me click on my database once just to kind of refresh. There's my people table and let me browse for it. I can now browse and I can see that my name has now been added, Ralph Phillips. Notice my people ID is a 5. I was doing a couple little tests um, when I wasn't recording doing just 1 through 4. So Ralph Phillips has added 5 and I can do a couple more tests here. Let me just go ahead and enter in uh, John Smith Oops, Jane Doe, add her, and Sally Struthers. Okay, so I've just added more records. Let me jump back over to the database, click Browse, and now we can see I've got more people in inserted.